Tell us a little bit about yourself, Hester. Hi, I'm Esther Smith. I'm a Scottish composer and harpist. Um, and I studied with Rosanna Moore, your partner in crime, uh, in Manchester, which is in England, uh, with our wonderful teacher, Erilyn Jones. I play a lot of folk music. I play kind of a lot of cross genre music. I love working in theatre and with words and in multi art forms. So you actually composed a piece for us around Alice in Wonderland. So could you tell us a little bit about your thought process for that, how it came to be and how you incorporated all those things you just mentioned into it? <laughs> yeah, well, it was so fun to be able to write for Rosie because I um, got to know her playing when I was studying with her. And so I wanted, I had her playing in mind. So I wanted to write something that was theatrical um, or straight off the bat because I knew that that was something she would do really well and um, she was interested in. So I wanted to write quite a flamboyant piece. I suppose I was really lucky as well because Alice in, Wonder in Wonderland is kind of naturally flamboyant, like the story of it and the content of it. So um, it was very, it was already a very evocative subject. Um, and I, I, I was also helped by those beautiful illustrations, which really kind of aided the, the feel of the performance of, of the music. Um, and it was the first time I've actually written for the bassoon. So I think I remember Blair asking you some probably quite kind of basic questions about how to write for the bassoon. Um, but I loved writing for the bassoon for the first time. Um, and I think it kind of encapsulates Alice in Wonderland really beautifully because it's one of those instruments like the harp um i suppose that is able to sound like really kind of has associations with both like like complete beauty and like ugliness that was like my starting point was just taking um what i knew about rose rosie um and just her name hats and heels jewel which immediately made me think okay these guys are these guys are up for some fun. You play folk and you do mixed genre and I know you're in a group. So can you talk a little about your group and what you do? Yeah, I'd love to. So um, I play with violinists. So it's um, it's a duo first and foremost, but we actually have been playing as a foursome um, for the last three or four years. Uh, obviously the pandemic kind of affects that, but we we play with a bassist and, dr and a drum drummer. Um, and we're just trying to work in a bit of percussion as well, um, which is actually really fun. It's fun to write for percussion. Um, so we've, yeah, we've been playing together since our days at the RNCM. We're such good friends now. We've spent so much time touring together and just hanging out and obviously making music together and running a business together. So it's a crazy relationship. Um, that we write music about subjects that are very close to us both because there are so many mutual subjects. Like we quite often write about um, our political beliefs or about um, a kind of like social commentary. And I know with that group that you've traveled a lot, what's was your favorite place to travel to? Oh my gosh. Um, um, I had, we went to Pomad Chile and, and played there and they just treated us so beautifully and the music was incredible that there we got like a real mixture of south american music from all over south america and they like treated us to this beautiful musical tour and this like amazing and um, like sea voyage on this little boat and like this incredible walk through the town and um it was just such a delight to be with those people in this amazing place and what's a food that you could basically live on forever Oh, that's a great question. If, if it was more nutritious, I could live on jelly. <laughs> I love the consistency of jelly. So you're the first guest that has come on with a hat. We've always asked the hat versus heels uh, conundrum, which would be your preference? Definitely hat. I'm not a, not a heels person, I'd say. I, I I don't I totter terribly. If you were to do any project, what would it be? Ooh, I 
think we would want to make a festival. That's something that's sort of been in the back of our minds for a long time. Um, bring together all of the people that we've met around the world and um, have like an unlimited budget of, for visas <laughs> and travel permits and all that. Uh, yeah, we'd love to run an international festival, which is about like celebrating collaboration and diversity and um, like real, you know, folk music, which is like a reflection on society. I think that's, it's just such a powerful tool to like echo what is happening in these countries and in society as a whole.